Hey guys, welcome. My name is Jessica. I'm the Furry Family Coach. Thank you so much for being here. In this video, we are going to be talking about these, these things called prong collars. These things right here, prongs. So if you are here trying to figure out if a prong collar is going to be right for you, you are in the right place. Make sure you watch till the end of this video because we're going to cover a lot about prong collars in this video. So again, my name is Jessica. I am a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me on my YouTube channel. If you are uh, interested at all in dog training, dog behavior, canine enrichment, and canine nutrition, please go ahead and subscribe. I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. In fact, don't do it right now. Wait till at the end of the video, I will remind you to subscribe to my channel. That way you can follow along and join my YouTube family. I would love to have you. So we're going to talk about all things prong collar in this video. And I have a few of them out here. Um, goodness. Okay. So basically this is a prong collar and, or as I like to call them, a bunch of blunt nails around a dog's neck. Um, I don't love them. Let's see, get them in here like this. Uh, but I do want to talk about them because they are definitely a fad. And I, I want to discuss if you have talked to a trainer who says you need to use one of these, run for the hills, find someone else. Um, my number, number one thing that I always tell people as a professional dog trainer, you are your dog's advocate. If you are uncomfortable with something, you are the only one who is going to speak up on behalf of your dog. If you're uncomfortable, say so. You don't have to use that trainer. You don't have to do what they say. Um, if you're uncomfortable with it, then it's most likely not for you. So this is a prong collar and I want to discuss why people use them, why they think they need to use them, and why that is wrong. Um, so let's start with why people use them. People primarily use them, or they, they were originally intended to be used at the very top of the neck for correction. Um, so these prongs, which is why it's called a prong collar, are designed to push into the neck causing discomfort uh, and they are very good at causing discomfort for sure. Now, oops, I'm trying to get this one put back together and it's not cooperating with me. I think it's rusted a little bit. Anyway, uh, so these things are, that was, that was the original intention. And first, let me tell you, I actually, I was just talking to a client recently about this who did go to a training session and was told in that training session, that he, it was a group training session, and the instructor started the session saying, you need to buy these prong collars for me. And he said, no, I'm not comfortable with that. And she said, well, then you can't take my course. And they left. And I said, thank you so much. You did the absolute best right thing. And um, here's some, we've got some extra links on here, but here we go. So um, this is, this is another one. This has the um, cloth piece on it instead of the chain piece like this one, but they come in all different shapes and sizes. You can get small ones like this. Um, Anyway, I was like, thank you so much for doing that because, you know, you are your dog's only advocate. And if you're not comfortable with it, then don't do it. And that's exactly what he did. So um, here's another smaller one. And I will also put a couple of pictures up here because people have gotten really good at disguising these and putting flat collars like this all the way around so that people don't recognize that it's a prong collar on a dog. Um, anyway, so what they are, they are tools. And as a, as a trainer, I, I go in to a training situation with no tools, pretty much, except for rewards. 
And um, I, I prefer it that way. We're gonna start that way for sure. Tools in, like this, in my opinion, and in the opinion of many others, are crutches for people that don't know how to properly train a dog. So I, I definitely don't like to use tools like this. E-collars or electronic collars fall in the same category. So what happens, and I wanna read you a quote. I'm gonna pop this quote up on the screen from Dr. Peter Darbias. Um, he is a veterinary doctor. He says, the neck and cervical spine are one of the most important energy channels in the body. It contains the spinal cord for supply to the whole body, is where the front leg nerves originate from, and it is the energy channel where the nerves controlling the internal organ function pass through. The thyroid gland that regulates the whole body metabolism is also located in the neck. If the flow of energy in the neck is interrupted or restricted, a whole array of problems may arise, including lameness, skin issues, allergies, lung and heart problems, digestive issues, ear and eye conditions, thyroid gland dysfunction, and even higher cancer rates. So that is from Dr. Peter Dobias. He is a world-renowned veterinarian. Um, these as you can tell, are not good for your dog for so many reasons. So like we just said, the neck is very sensitive and your dog's neck contains so many veins and arteries, their esophagus, their trachea, all of the spinal cord are all in your dog's neck. So what happens if your dog is lunging and barking, if they have a prong collar on, they take a breath in, the prong collar pulls, your dog is being asphyxiated. This is incredibly uncomfortable, incredibly painful, not to mention the damage it actually does to the skin. So I'm gonna put a very light pressure on my hand with these prongs and look at that, look at that. I'm gonna go ahead and insert some pictures of some other dogs and things that uh, prong collars have done to their necks. It is incredibly heartbreaking to me. So there are so many reasons not to use a prong collar or an electronic collar. In fact, I don't even recommend attaching a leash to a collar, even if you're using a flat collar. I feel like a flat collar is for tags and accessorizing. Go ahead and buy those really pretty vibrant colored collars because you can accessorize with them. For me, I want to completely get the pressure off of your dog's neck 100% of the time. I recommend a harness. Oftentimes, especially if you have a strong puller or a dog that lunges, get a collar with a front clasping harness and one on the back and one on the front. So you have two points of contact with your dog. That's gonna be the best tool that you can use for a strong puller or lunger when you are walking your dog. Get rid of these. If you have one of these in your home right now, take it off of your dog, throw it in the trash. It is the only, only place a prong collar belongs is in the trash. Um, in fact, as soon as I'm done with this video, all of these prong collars are going straight in the trash can. Let's also talk about the psychological effects of having a prong collar on, which ultimately means that you are using fear and pain. First of all, we know that in both dogs and humans and many other animals, when we are in a place of fear, and when we are feeling physical pain, we are not in a place of learning. So if you think that by using this collar, you are teaching your dog anything, you are not. What happens is your dog pulls or lunges, they feel the physical pain. In fact, more often than not, I see this, I have seen many other dog trainers post about this. If you have an aggressive dog, 
or a dog who pulls on the leash or a dog who lunges and barks, what happens, or, or a fearful dog for that matter, what happens is when you use any sort of fear and pain, this included because this both incites pain, which then makes your dog fearful, the aggression and the fearfulness, the anxiety levels increase. So if you're dealing with a dog who is aggressive or who pulls on the leash or who lunges and barks, this is only going to exacerbate the problem. So what you actually need to do is use positive reinforcement to recondition what your to recondition your dog's reaction to certain stimulus. So the psychological effects, first of all, to just put it in layman's terms and how I talk to my clients about the bond with their dog, you and your dog should trust one another. If your dog doesn't trust you, your bond is broken. If you are using fear and pain, you don't have trust in your relationship. And that's really such a shame. It is such a huge shame. You and your dog should be, your bond should be, you should be able to trust each other no matter what. And if your dog can't trust you, if you are using fear and pain and they cannot trust you, think about what animals, how animals react to fear and pain, including human animals. The only thing we wanna do and our brains are wired to do is remove all fear and pain from our lives. This is why it's so hard for us as humans to do things that are uncomfortable to us. Even if we know in the long run, we're going to wind up better off, our brain is telling us, no, don't take that risk. We don't want any discomfort. It's, it's too scary, stay away from it. Our, our, the entire purpose of our brain is to remove discomfort, remove fear, remove pain from our lives. This is the same with our dogs. So if your dog is in a situation where they are fearful and where they are not trusting, um, they are going to, at any given chance, they are going to try to retaliate, especially if they are being uh, physically harmed. They're going to try to retaliate or they're gonna try to just simply get away from that situation. So. You, Ultimate, you're, ultimately, you're left with a dog who can't trust you and a dog that you can't trust. And that is no way for you and your dog to coexist. That is no way for a dog, a dog shouldn't have to live like that. But literally, it is no way to coexist with a dog. So please, I implore you to not use fear and pain to train, to not use these horrible torture devices. And so, of course, I'm only one person. However, I do wanna help as many people as I can. I wanna help as many dogs as I can. I feel like that's my purpose in this world is to help people and their pets. So, first of all, let me tell you, if, if, if you use one of these, please stop using one of these reach out to me. I will be happy to suggest some harnesses. In fact, I will post some harness links in the description below. Check them out. Find a good two-point harness, one where you can attach to their chest, one where you can attach to their back. You can have two points of contact with your dog. This is going to be your best bet, especially if you have a dog who is aggressive or a dog who pulls strongly on a leash. This is going to do nothing but hurt your dog. It's going to ruin the bond you and your dog have. If you have somebody suggesting that you get one of these, please do not listen. If you have one of these, please get rid of it. I will put links for harnesses below that I recommend, that I like. And I also have in the description below a link to my digital book. In this book, I give you my seven canine commandments, which are the foundation that I give every single one of my in-home clients. Now, this video is not an ad for my book. However, if you're using one of these or if you're being suggested to use one of these and you are struggling because you don't know what to do, I highly recommend. It's an incredibly small investment. 
It will lead you on the right track. Every single one of my in-home clients is required to read this prior to my first visit with them. That way they have all of the foundation in place before we start any additional training with their dog. I highly recommend you grab a copy, even if it's just to put your mind at ease as to why you don't want one of these things. And that that link is in the description below. Again, this is not an advertisement for my book. This really is just for me to tell you about what these things really do to your dog um, and why I don't like them, why I will I don't recommend them. I will never recommend them. And I highly rec suggest that you don't use one with your dog. Psychological effects of using fear and pain with your dog result in a lot of submissive posturing and fear responses. And these are observed in things like laying their ears flat against their head, um, having their eyes really super narrow like slits, or having really wide eyes where you can see the whites of their eyes, which is also known as whale eye, and having their lips pulled back in what kind of looks like a grin. Also really low to the ground postures, having a front paw raised, lying on their back with their belly up. That is, that you really have to take that in context because that could be just a really happy, go lucky, um, really comfortable dog, but it could also, depending on context, again, it could mean that they are being submissive and if you, if you just walk in a room and a dog does that, more than likely that's a submissive posturing. Possible urine leaking or dribbling and also possibly emptying their anal scent glands. If a dog is showing one or more of these signs, it's very possible that they are having fear and pain used in their lives and unfortunately their lives just aren't that happy. These are also signs of fearful body posturing. Many, many dog trainers, uh, because I'm in the world and I see a lot of trainers posting about this on social media and I've talked to people, I've talked to clients, I've talked to other dog trainers, more often than not, when we have a client who comes in with one of these or with an electronic collar, we see increases in aggression. These uh, pet parents are seeing increases in aggression, increases in pulling on the leash, increases in acting out in bad behavior. And I completely understand it. If this were being used on me, I would also be fearful. I would also be distrusting. I'm thankful to have a platform like YouTube to bring real scientific based information to people so that you can understand what I already understand as a positive reinforcement trainer that fear and pain are not appropriate ways to train. They are not going to actually teach your dog anything and they all they do is destroy the bond between you and your dog. I'm a firm believer in science based training which is why I'm a positive reinforcement trainer. If you or someone you know feels like or says something to you like some dogs need a heavier hand or you can't train an aggressive dog unless you use force. Unfortunately, these phrases are becoming commonplace and cliche almost and they couldn't be further from the truth. Science-based training is all you need to train a dog. You don't need these things. A dog is a living, breathing being with feelings, with nerves, with brains. That's why we have to use science and a solid learning theory to actually teach them the appropriate behaviors we want to see in them. So guys, with that, I if you have any questions at all, please post them below in the comments. I would love to hear your, your comments. Let me know if you're currently using a prong collar, if you are getting rid of a prong collar, if you are being told that you need to use a prong collar and you don't feel like it's appropriate, you don't feel like you wanna do that to your dog, post that in the comments below. I wanna hear about it. I wanna hear your thoughts. I wanna hear your opinions. I wanna help change your mind if you think prongs are the way to go. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate each and every one of you. 
If you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. I would love to have you as part of my YouTube family. Once you click that subscribe button right next to it, a bell will pop up. Click that, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Don't forget to grab your copy of my book. The link is in the description, along with some really amazing harness options. I will post those in the description as well. Thank you so much for being here with me. I'm sorry this video ran a little long, but I really appreciate you being here. This is such an important topic. I'll see you in my next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.